everybody it's me Laura and today we're gonna do my hugs canes and you know how much I love hugs <laughs> so yes we're gonna do the hugs cane today and this is gonna be a really fun one it's not you know it's really kind of based on the segmented pedal cane but right here I have a core of one and a quarter inches in diameter on my white plug here we're gonna roll this up in my black clay I want to say I flattened this out on a number one setting on my Atlas pasta machine Now I'm going to find that little grease mark where I'm going to cut right on the inside of that and this way then the black will line up right with the other side of it. Once we have this, I took my scissors and I thought we're going to go ahead and trim this up because I always get that little extra black around the edges at the end and I thought if I can try and consolidate and keep some of that for another project, yay, because <laughs> I always seem to run out of black clay. Anyway, once I get this trimmed up, we're going to go ahead and reduce this down you know, I'll use my finger and thumb right around the center. We'll create that little barbell kind of like look. And once we have that, we'll just kind of roll that out just a little bit more, thinning out this um, cane where it's going to be, you know, it's going to be smaller, it's going to be reduced. Once you do that, you're going to bring in your rolling pin. You're going to flatten this out slightly. And I, I decided to cut off the ends too. I had a lot of white coming through. So I thought I could take some of that off and use that in another project. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and like I said, bring in my acrylic roller here. I'm flattening this out. It's kind of into like an oval like kind of cane sort of. And then I'm just kind of thinning this out. I want to get as much as I possibly can cut this in half and then we're going to go ahead and cut it in half again. Like I said, this is based on the segmented pedal cane. So we have our four segments. We're going to go ahead and we'll put all four of these together. Once I have these all four together, you know, it, it really doesn't matter too much when it comes to you could put a registration line on this I guess um, the thing is is that when you do that registration line it does show up and I'd rather not have that so I'm just creating the brick I'm you know you could kind of see where it's already you know where the segments are even in the black there and so if, as long as I keep that in that kind of block form that I'm doing right here with my acrylic roller you should be good once I have this, I decided I got a little bit long. This is now like three quarters of an inch, right? And then it's like, yeah, three quarters of an inch square. So when I did this, I thought, okay, mm, let's cut it, you know, cut the ends off, get it where I like it. And I found that, you know, when I measured this lengthwise, it turned out to be about like one and three quarters of an inch, right? And that's a little bit too long for me. So I thought, let's cut it in half. The nice thing about that is I have two sections then, right? I got two sections to work with. Plus you can, because what we're going to do here, yeah, this is more like an inch. Okay. I can cut down on that cane without it going too wonky at an inch tall. If you get really tall on your cane and you try to cut it, mm, it doesn't work out so good. And that's what I'm doing right here. And I'm going a little off, not quite corner to corner. I'm going off just a little bit. And once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take all four of these sections and I'm going to roll out another piece of black clay. And I'm going to roll that out on my Atlas pasta machine on a number four setting. We're going to place them down like I'm doing right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut that black for each of these. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put together this hugs cane the way I've got it. And I'm just going to tell you right now, I have two ways in which I did it. This one was the way where I put the black, where I put the extra black on the one side. And I will tell you, this was a little bit more confusing for me. I had trouble. I was like, oh, wait a minute. This isn't quite going the way I'd like it. 
but I figured it out. And a lot of it is just understanding that if you have a long little section that you cut, you're going to have all the little lines then on the next section meeting up to that one long line. And eventually this is going to form into a square cane. Now in doing it this way, it took a little bit of maneuvering, but I was really glad that I cut it the way I did, where I kind of cut it not corner to corner. Um, most of the time I like to do corner to corner and this way does work. You can see how it's come around. The nice thing about it is when you do it this way, it kind of curves around. You push that clay around on each section and it, it works out really nice. However, that being said, you got to make sure that when they meet in the center, that you want to make sure that the um, point meets and not like one little section goes right into the next little section. Although it creates a really cool effect. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to go back and try that other way that I was talking about, and I liked this so much better. And a lot of it is because I'm going off center like I am here, I'm cutting that, okay? I'll have four sections, but watch watch what I do here. I'm cutting these in half. Now mind you, this gets kind of tiny, okay? But I didn't have a ton of clay. I can make more if I wanted, but I kind of like the idea of just cutting it in half, giving me four sections. The nice thing here is I'm now taking this and I'm squeezing these into triangular more forms, kind of like my kaleidoscope cane. I really like to make sure I have a point, that they're very distinct triangles. Here you want the same kind of thing. Now you're also going to see that I'm not covering up where I had cut, okay? Leave that you know, don't wrap it in black or don't put a piece of black on those sides because this is going to help guide you when you go to put this together. So what I mean by that is when you go to put it together, you're going to have like one long kind of like uh, uh, section up against all four of the other little sections on the next little triangular piece. In doing this, all your lines will be on the outside. So it's a nice way to remember, oh, okay, the black lines will be on the inside of the cane and all the ones that are not covered up will be looking outward, if you will. So right here, you could tell already it's just black, black. You see the lines on the outside and it works really well. It keeps it nicely. It helps make this cane come together so much easier than when I had covered it up the first time around. All right, so from here, it's just pushing these four little small triangular canes together, forming this square cane, which will be your original hugs pattern. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring in that black clay. This was uh, flattened out on a number four setting on my Atlas Post machine. Because I've reduced this, the original triangles down, I want them to be in about the same kind of, how do I put this, uh, thickness as my lines on the inside. And I'm just wrapping this up and that way then you don't have to worry about it. It's all set then. You have your cane all encased and right here I'm just bringing my scissors to trim up that extra black. And then from here we're just going to go ahead and reduce this down because what I want to do is cut off 16 slices from this cane. This way then I can, and you know my slices just as an FYI, just a remembrance here, each of those little slices will then represent a cane. So if I made 16 of these canes, I want to be able to put these together to see what that bigger pattern is going to look like. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring in my blade. I'm going to cut that in half and there is your pattern. And I tell you, I just, <laughs> I like this cane. It's just a fun one to do. And now I'll go ahead and cut those 16 slices to see what that larger cane would look like.
Okay, so this is the original pattern I got when I cut those 16 slices. I like it a lot. It's really fun to play with. However, I found that I really could not get a whole lot of other different kinds of patterns out of it. So let's go ahead and change this up a little bit by using some simple canes to see if maybe we'll get something more fun when we create this hugs pattern. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and create a bullseye cane and I'm using my blue and my white. I wanted to bring in some color. Uh, normally and naturally, yes, I mean, I love my black and white. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but I wanted to go ahead and create a bullseye cane and we're just gonna do a quick Skinner blend of that dark blue and that white. I think it's gonna change this up slightly and it's gonna give it a different look. Now I have my bullseye together. We're gonna to bring in my ruler here. It's like an inch and a quarter in diameter all the way around, about an inch tall. I really like an inch tall. It's just easier to cut with it. You know, I mean, if you're cutting on the other end, it's like, yeah, easier to kind of do that. So anyway, I'm bringing in my black here. This was also done on a number one setting because it's a pretty thick um, little um, you know, bullseye that I've got going on here. And then I'm just gonna wrap that up in that black and we'll trim it up and we'll go from there. All right, again, I've flattened out this into a little oval type cane. Once I've done that, we're gonna cut this in half. I'll create those four sections and create my segment and pedal cane. The thing is here, again, I am not going to use a registration mark. Now, I know that kind of flies in the face of, you know, it kind of helps. <laughs> but, the you know, this cane is not really particularly different on one side or the other. It's a bullseye. You know, it's round. It's, you know, pretty much the same thing all the way around, okay? And, like I said, when I did the first time around, you can make it into a block and keep it like that, it's all good, okay? Once you do that, you're gonna create your little triangles. And in th this time around, I decided to go ahead and do it like I did the first time, where I went ahead and I covered the stripes on the one side. Um, what can I say? You don't learn your lesson sometimes. <laughs> At least in my case, I didn't, you know? And it did make it more difficult to like, okay, which, where, how do I put this back together again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this. The second time around was so much easier because each of those sections were uncovered and then I could just wrap it in black once I had it all together. So as you can see here, you know, I'm going to start to fiddle around with these sections because I'm like, okay, I cover that up and I thought it was good. No, no, <laughs> it's hard to figure it out. It really is. Plus, again, I need to go ahead and make these more into triangles. You know, it really right here, you have to do it because that's going to make it so much easier to figure out where's my point goes right towards center and then have the others, you know, kind of form right off of that. I want to say, as I was putting this particular hugs cane together, the, you know, because of the bullseye feature and the fact that I have that blue in there, it changed up the dynamic of this cane. It wasn't just plain solid color. It added a, a dimension I didn't have before. You know, that, that bullseye look just really made it nice. I mean, it was like, it, it almost made it look like it was slightly shaded, if you will. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, when I think about zentangling, for instance, and this being a zentangle pattern, you know, you like to shade areas to kind of give it more depth. And in this case, 
because I did this with that bullseye cane, it really kind of added an extra dimension. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to use both uh, the first hugs cane that I created and the one with the bullseye. And I wanted to put them together to form some, you know, really fun and different canes. And it works better this way. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of boring with just one, you know, one cane. <laughs> and it's, I think it's just because it's all the same all the way around. So from here, I'm just going to go ahead and let my hands talk a little bit. And I'll just show you the different patterns, the different options you'll get when you combine these two different hugs type canes. So here are a few patterns that I got from just combining these two hugs canes, but let's move on because there's a few more tricks that we can do with this hugs pattern that I have not yet shown you. Again, here I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my blue and white Skinner blend, and we're just gonna go ahead and fan fold this thing. So, you know, I'm gonna go from my white to my blue here. And I really wanted to try this because, you know, I really find when I'm creating cane work, the fan fold is the one that to me offers the most options when it comes to different looks, if you will. You know, the bullseye, like I said, the bullseye, it's the same thing all the way around. Same with just a plain color, there's no, difference there. It's all the, the same look, but with a fan fold, you have one color to another. So there's a difference in the look and it creates all sorts of options. Okay, so now my fan folded brick here is one and a quarter by one inch in diameter. And then I'm going to wrap this in my black clay. It's done on a number two setting in this case. And because I'm using a fan folded cane here, you know, I'm wrapping this in black, but we're going to give this one registration lines. And I'm doing that because one side of the cane is not the same as the other. You got white on one end, you got blue on the other. And to make sure that you know which end is which, you really need to have that registration mark. You'll notice that here I put registration marks on both the blue and the white side or the white ends. We're going to reduce this down some, um, some more even. I'll take my acrylic roller, we'll flatten that out. I'll take the odd ends off here, my junk ends. We'll save that for something else. <laughs> and then I'm just going to use my acrylic roller. We'll go ahead and flatten this out into that oval-like kind of like cane. Um, cut this into four sections, bring them together, and then we're going to go ahead and create that wonderful little hugs pattern. All 
All right, now that I've got this together and I'm cutting it diagonally and just a little bit off center so I could get that one little end, so not corner to corner, but just a little off, we're gonna go ahead and cut four of these sections. And then when I have this, I'm gonna start making these into more triangular kinds of canes. Remember to do that each time. And you'll notice here on this particular um, way I'm doing this hugs cane, that two of these triangular pieces are more light and the other two are more dark, okay? And when I put them together, I'm gonna to go opposite. So if I have one that's coming in that's gonna be a dark cane, I'm gonna put the lighter one next to it, and I'm gonna then put the other dark cane on the opposite side with the lighter one next to it. Just remember that all of your lines that are uncovered and not covered up with black, those will help you tremendously because really they're gonna be facing outwards. So you know, okay, that's gonna be one of those sections that faces outwards. It'll keep you from getting too confused as to how to put it together. This way then your guide will always be the idea of having that uncovered section on each of the triangles facing outwards. Here I'm gonna start bringing in the pieces from just my fan folded cane and put together a couple of patterns. There were really only kind of a few, but the few that I got were very dramatic. I loved them. So I got this one and I got this next one and then I got a third one and I thought that's good enough. And then after that, I wanted to go ahead and I decided to bring in my bullseye cane and add in those you know cut sliced pieces that I had done and really kind of mix it up and have some fun.
So here are just a few combinations I got when I combined the bullseye and the fan fold, but let's move on and see what we get when we use all three canes together. So of course, when you put all three of these together, the combinations just become crazy. <laughs> You can do all sorts of stuff. You know, you get 16 and really, if you think about it, you'll need three of one or a, a, just fewer of each one, but the different combinations you get can be so cool. So really guys, have some fun with this and enjoy it. Okay, so these are the end results of creating my three different hugs canes and the patterns that resulted from them. And remember, these are just a few. Oh my, uh, I barely touched upon probably even what, maybe a quarter of the different combinations you can get. I hope you will create a few of your own. Plus, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'm always wondering what you're thinking. Otherwise, I am sending out my biggest hugs. Get it? Hugs, hugs, hugs. <laughs> to each of you, and I hope you have a fantastic day. <laughs>